The Bank of Japan just announced a new rate hike, the second of this year, and the tightening of its monetary policy as it tries to stabilize the yen that is now about 152 yen to the dollar after dipping to 161 yen to the dollar early in July. Reassure the financial markets and the Japanese population. We are only at 0.25%, but it's bigger than you think because we were still in negative territory back in March. After all, this is the country of the 0.02% savings accounts and under 3% mortgage rates. The inflation is still at 2.8% annually, which is the same as it was in May and as high as it was back in February. Everything is expensive. Gas and electricity remain very high after the end of the subsidies. Food is very expensive, as is everything else except for education. So basically, the Bank of Japan had no choice but do this increase to try to stabilize the economy. So we'll try to have a look at what are the impact depending on where you stand, starting with the Japanese family, with the mortgage, the real estate market, as well as how the markets might react. I'm gonna reuse some of the analysis I made back in March because the macroeconomics haven't changed that much and also because I'm on the road, I'm not in my studio, as you can see, I'm in the middle of my summer holiday actually, but I didn't want to leave you alone when so many things are changing. So I hope it's okay with you. With this introduction, some of my older contents that's still very up to date, and I'll come back at the end of the video to give you my final thoughts. There's a lot to impact, so let's get started. About 61% of Japanese households own their own home, and the past 10, 11 years, the price of real estate has been gradually going up and up after a long time of stability or decline. To give you an idea, an average apartment in Tokyo for about 70 square meters to 80 square meters cost about $466,000 and a single family home is about $466,000 to $666,000 depending on the location. And the prices have been going up for several reasons. There's obviously the international investors that have benefited for very low interest rate as well as looking at very good returns compared to the home market but more importantly it's been the very very cheap mortgages thanks to the very cheap interest rate as well as insurance from the government for first-time buyer that permitted many to consider buying homes for the first time now how cheap are those mortgages you might ask if we're looking for a 35 year fixed mortgage, the starting price is about 3.4%, but it can be much lower than that if you invest a lot in a certain bank, if you are buying certain financial product, and you can go down to a percent or 1.5%, which was the case, for example, for me in this house. But more importantly, if you are willing to go with viable interest rate, then we are talking sub 1%, 0.3%, 0.4% for 35-year mortgage. Now, the reasons are obvious. We have been for so long in a negative interest rate environment. That being said, about 70% of all the mortgages in Japan are actually variable rate mortgages. And there's a word in Japan called the 5125. Basically, what it says is every five years, the bank can increase your monthly repayment up to 125%. So if you look at this example, you have the first year when you're doing it and you have a very low interest rate. But after from year six, if there's been an increase of 125%, then your interest rate goes all of a sudden a lot higher. Then every five years, it keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. As you can see up to that point where you might be paying over 16% yearly interest rate. That being said, in Japan, by law, you cannot have an interest rate that's higher than 15%, so that would be capped. But that could increase a lot very, very fast. And there might be some bell tightening from some of the families that have those variable interest rate to pay. And their actual real wages have not been increasing for a very long time, except maybe starting this year, it's gonna be a change, but still, there is not much wiggle room for all those families. What will be the impact on the real estate market? As I mentioned, the prices have been going up for the past 10, 11 years. For people looking for a place to live, it may make things more difficult, but it all depends on where they are as buyers, where they are positioning in what's called 
the tripolarization of the Japanese real estate market. So it actually talks about the three types of real estate properties you have in Japan and mainly in the Tokyo area. The most desirable location, the top of the market, is probably not going to see any change anytime soon and prices are going to keep out there or continue going up. Now, middle part of the market is probably going to be stable, decrease a little bit, but not too much. And for the bottom tier of the market, you're going to see a reduction there continuing. What's going to happen for real estate investors? Honestly, I don't foresee much changes. Real estate investors in Japan always had a bit higher interest rate if they were borrowing or they were buying cash. So this should not be a big change. We might see rental prices go up as we've seen in other places just because people cannot afford to buy a house. This may impact positively the rental yield in a lot of parts of Japan. When we see the yield is about 4.5 to 10% depending on the location, the yield might actually go up. And those almost free houses that are all the rage that are called Akia, they are still going to be around. So they're still available for investors to grab with very minimum cash and very good return. So that's not going to be changing. Now, if we look at the stock market, what are going to be the effects of this massive announcement by the BOJ? Well, basically what the BOJ is telling us is that the economy is going back to a more normal state. And the BOJ, to be very honest, has been more or less pre-announcing and communicating its change in policy for the past few months. So probably the market has already priced in all of those changes. The BOJ reducing its massive balance sheet might temper everybody's enthusiasm though. As we have seen recently when they declared that they stopped buying ETFs and J rates and the market immediately took a small hit on those and it's going to take time and also the BOJ cannot increase the interest rate too much because it has a lot of debt as well. The government has a lot of debt as well. We are over 200% and it's a lot compared to the rest of the other G7 economies. We don't want things to move too fast because that would be terrible for the government and its debt, obviously, but for the Japanese companies as well, because they need to have clarity on how to edge everything that they're doing and import and export. And for the Japanese consumers, like everybody around me and myself as well, we've seen the prices going up a lot for very, very basic products and also for utilities. So people are going to probably continue what they've been doing since the beginning of the year, putting money into the stock market. Because since the beginning of the year, if you're not aware, the NISA has been reborn and the NISA is the Nippon Investment Saving Account. The local equivalent of the UK ISA or a distant cousin to the IRA, Roth IRA for you if you're watching from the US. And it's been tremendously successful with literally billions and billions pouring into the market. And although a lot of the money has gone to international markets, a lot has been staying on the Japanese market. A lot have been going into mutual funds, into ETFs, and this is going to continue propping up and supporting the Japanese stock market for as far as we can tell. So overall, it's still very fresh and we still need to see how the financial markets and the Japanese economy will react to the news. For the Japanese people and the residents of Japan, the hope is that the yen is going to stabilize a little bit so that the price of energy, the price of food and overall all the prices will stabilize a little bit so it's easier for day-to-day -day life and reduce the overall uncertainty about the future. Though personally, I'm not too hopeful because the main macroeconomic points have not changed. We still have a very high public debt, we still have a declining population and international tensions. I hope this gives you a very good idea of all the ins and outs and all the different scenarios that can play out in the near future. And thank you for watching, thank you for being agreeable to this new environment and a mix and match on content. If you like this content, or learn something, please give it a like. Do not hesitate to subscribe for more to come. And if you want to learn more about the Japanese economy and how to invest into it, there is this playlist here or that video here. You can click on it immediately. Thank you again and until next time, goodbye.